hackers, makers, innovation, and you. How do all these pieces fit together? Well, it has a lot to do with the props you use and how you use them. Drex here from DrexFactor.com, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about two different groups of people that sometimes overlap out there in the flow arts community and how they contribute to creating the things that we get to use in it. Before we dive in, I just want to give a shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Toys, Pyroterra Light Toys, LMF Props, Spinballs, and Ultrapoy for helping to make videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing companies and the things that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. So this might be kind of a weird stretch of a topic for a video, but stick with me here because I've met a lot of people that make things in the flow arts community and I feel like there tend to be these two different kind of camps of philosophy when it comes to creating creating things that sometimes are in tension and sometimes support each other. But I've always found both of them interesting in terms of the different materials and props that we're able to use. And to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, I want to draw a distinction between one of the first sets of poi I ever owned and the most recent set of poi that I have owned. Now, this is a set of poi, well it's a single poi, but it's part of a pair that go back with me nearly a decade. The chain used in it is chain that I acquired at McGuckin's Hardware in Boulder, Colorado, where I grew up. Um, it's got a palm grip handle, but it didn't originally. Originally, it had a furniture foot that I drilled a hole through, uh, as well as the swivel inside of it, also that I acquired at McGuckin's Hardware, and is held in place with a little bolt. Uh, the head is literally the only thing in here, well, aside from the palm grip, that I didn't acquire and put together myself. That is, you know, the quick link, the swivels, the chain, all of it came from places that I sourced parts from. So I made as much of this as I possibly could. Basically what I did is I found what was nearby and at hand, and I figured out how to make it work for a thing that I wanted to create. And this, on the other hand, is part of a pair of fire poi that I got from Crispy Clowns while I was at Fire Drums. Now the difference here is that I was not involved in the creation of any part of this prop, aside from telling Lance from Crispy Clowns exactly what specs I wanted for length and the width of the, uh, the tether and everything. It's got a set of handles that were 3D printed by Propbox Approved in the Bay Area. It's got a Technora tether that had to be put together and uh, brummel spliced by the people at Crispy Clans. And of course, that monkey fist head, which it has in common with the other set of poi. So the difference between these two things, one of these things was hacked together from off-the-shelf parts, and the other one is made out of components that have been brought into the fire arts specifically because they answer problems that we have. We have the hackers, and we have the makers. And before I get too deep into this, I also want to say that I think both of these different kind of philosophies are really important. I know a lot of people that take pride in the fact that they make their own props, that they drill out their own stage heads, that they find whatever ropes are at their local hardware store that best fit their needs. And that's cool. And there's also this entire other culture of people that are engineering props specifically for large numbers of people to use. And I feel like sometimes I see a lot of the hackers trying to push people towards the idea that they should all make their own props, which is the right answer for a lot of people, but it's not the right answer for all of them. And in the meantime, what we gain from the makers are some really innovative solutions to some really complex problems. Like, my double staves here have carbon fiber cores to them, not wood, not steel. They have a very, very light material that we've found is engineered in such a way that is perfect for double staff spinners. It gives them a good combination between weight and strength. And quite frankly, if we didn't explore options for being able to create props in a more industrialized fashion, we would never be able to make a thing like this cost effective. Likewise, many of us have owned contact poi, and I'm willing to bet that 99% of us out there that have owned a set have owned a set that were made by drilling out a pair of stage balls. When I first encountered Lanternsmith's contact poi, they were kind of a breath of fresh air because for the first time, they involved using sets of heads that had been engineered specifically for contact poi users and that had an assembly for putting in the tethers and everything that you could remove and add weight to and everything if you wanted to. This is something that was made specifically with poi spinners in mind. It wasn't something that we cobbled together from something that already existed. 
And I think when that happens, it's incredibly cool. I love seeing products that have been created with us specifically in mind, not only because it allows people that have that kind of engineering acumen to be able to display their creativity and contribute to the community, but also because fundamentally it says that there are enough of us out there that it is worth putting together these kinds of creative solutions for the problems that we face. And that also gives me a little bit of a segue into talking about the sponsor of all of this month's videos, Mayday Atlanta. They make fire safety blankets. In fact, they make the best fire safety blankets I've used, and they're a great example of a company that is creating a product that is engineered specifically for us. So let's talk for a moment about the innovations that come with these blankets. The first, of course, is that they're made out of aramid fabrics. That is, fabrics that are inherently fire resistant. You can wash them. They also have these fantastic reflective layers around the edge. A lot of us when we're inside the fire circle know that when you're looking for a safety, sometimes you're literally grasping in the dark. One of the cool things about these reflective edges is that they actually reflect the light from your fire. So you can see them wherever you happen to be in the circle. They're very visible. And finally, how often have you lost a safety blanket at an event? I can't count the number of times that a duvetine has just gone missing after it's been mixed in with everybody else's stuff. These you can get embroidered with your name and especially because these are such an investment in everything, it's a great way of protecting that investment and making sure that your safety blanket goes home with you at the end of the event. So, Made Atlanta, they're one of those companies that is innovating specifically for fire artists and I think it's amazing. If you want to pick up one of these blankets for yourself, please head on over to MadeatL.com and use the promo code DREXFACTOR when you do. It'll get you a discount on your own safety blanket. And now let's go back to talking about our hackers and makers, shall we? So this is one of my very favorite innovations that has happened in the fire spinning world in the past few years. This is Technora, because for most of the time that I've been spinning fire, really the only option that you had for a tether material was chain, which there are good parts of chain. It is very, very, very fire resistant. And there are also bad parts of chain, namely that it's not particularly comfortable to use and it's not as flexible as rope is. And so when you're making the transition of tricks, especially things like throws from your practice poi to your fire poi, the quality of those throws would change considerably between the two different mediums. Now, Technora is really cool because it gives us the feeling of rope even when we are spinning fire poi. Um, the first time I used a set of Technora tethers, I thought that like somebody had just opened a gateway into a parallel universe where fire spinning was, was much more comfortable and much more like spinning the practice poi that I was used to. To be honest, the weekend I got these, I wound up using these even for practice far more often than I did my own practice poi. And of course, sometimes you get products that have been engineered tip to tip with prop spinners in mind. You know, Flow Toys, I think, maybe qualifies as the original maker in terms of the flow art space and everything. And, you know, you look at a set of pod poi and every single component of it is something that Flow Toys has developed specifically for us to use. Whether it be the uh, pod casings, the programming of the lights inside, you know, they went through such a process coming up with their flow cord, trying to figure out what was the ideal stretch to it and what the ideal diameter of it was. They even make their own handles now, too. So it's really interesting to see some of the ways in which, you know, going into the makerspace can lead not just to individual innovations, but to entire products where you're creating something out of whole cloth for people in mind. And I think it should also probably be said that a lot of the makers out there probably started as hackers. You know, I think that a lot of people, as they're working on scalable problems and everything, are bringing to bear a lot of the skills that they first learned on how to hack together their first few sets of poi or first staffs or what have you in order to get there. And I think that both are necessary because when I first got into spinning, one of the things that was really interesting to me about it was the empowerment element of it. You know, I built my first three or four sets of poi, and I felt empowered not just because I was learning a bunch of tricks, but also because I was building the tools that I was using to be able to explore this world. And there is something about building a thing yourself that adds to that feeling of empowerment for sure. But I also think that in a lot of cases there's both a life cycle as well as a scalability to those innovations. You know, it's one thing to have a hundred thousand people all making their own sets of fire poi. And if that's going to happen, then there's going to be a certain percentage of them that are going to make poi that aren't terribly safe. It's a lot easier to make sure that the majority of them are safe when it's like a face-to-face -face thing with several hundred or even low thousands of people. 
But when you have tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people getting into the art through online videos or conversations and everything, all of a sudden it takes a very, very different set of solutions in order to make that happen. So I have been a hacker in my day, enough so that I really appreciate the makers out there. Um, and again, I apologize if I'm not using that term appropriately here, but it felt like the correct term to use in this context. So my hats are off to the companies out there that are doing that work, that are creating original products for us out there, because it doesn't just give us stuff that makes us safer or is more fun to spin with. You know, it's also a statement that we're important, that we are a subculture that means enough to somebody that they're willing to devote all of that creativity and energy into solving our problems. And that's pretty cool, I think, yeah? So if you like this video, please make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Uh, the reason being that, of course, YouTube is constantly changing its discovery algorithm and hitting that notification bell is literally the only way that you can make sure that whatever changes they institute, uh, you're still going to get my videos sent directly to you. And I would like for you to keep watching them if you want to at least, yeah? Also, a big thank you to all of my wonderful supporters on Patreon, without whom the videos on this channel would not be possible. Um, if you would like to sign up to support the work that I do, please head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi. Uh, and the great thing about that is you get access to exclusive content, behind the scenes stuff, as well as a vote in the content that I pursue on my channel. Uh, so again, head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and sign up. What are your favorite innovations in the flow art space? Who created them? Have you ever made your own props? Uh, what were the pros and cons to that? Let me know down in the comments. Uh, and of course, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and check out the other videos on this channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching, and have a good one. Peace.